Well, no rain right now outside in Kentuckyana, but come late tonight and starting tomorrow, nothing but green will be seen on your screens. We've got team coverage right here at five. Ian Hardwick is traveling across Louisville in the city and MSD prepares for heavy rain tomorrow. Jose Alonzo is live at Louder Than Life where organizers do have a severe weather plan. But first, it's Chief Meteorologist Ben Pine. Where's Helene right now, uh, Ben? I just saw that live Max HD radar really zeroing in on a Florida coastline. Getting very close to Florida, only about 100 miles out to the west of Tampa right now, about 180 miles to the southeast of Pensacola, heading right to that Big Bend region of Florida, basically where the panhandle ends and where the peninsula begins. And that landfall is going to be a little bit later on this evening. And then uh, that heavy rain is going to be stretching our direction. Right now, the rain is light to the east and a few thunderstorms out to our west. So enjoying the last moments of some quiet weather around our area before all that rain that's in eastern Kentucky attached and swirling into Helene begin to move our direction. So as we zoom in a little bit closer to home here, we do have a wind advisory that kicks in 7 a.m. tomorrow lasts all day long. Could have some wind gusts around 40 to 50 tomorrow afternoon, especially, and that could cause some spotty power outages, maybe some tree limb damage. And then along and south of the parkways, we've got a flood watch where we could see two to four inches of rainfall, rising rivers, creeks and streams and lowland flooding will be possible tomorrow and into Saturday. That flood watch begins this evening at 8 p.m. and continues into Saturday morning. Here's the light rain spreading in from the east. Uh, this is after sunset around 9 p.m. More widespread, heavier pockets of rain through the overnight hours. So the winds start to pick up tomorrow morning and may want some extra time hitting those wet roads and the soggy conditions out there tomorrow morning. Gustier conditions tomorrow afternoon with still some heavy rainfall, basically a washout for your Friday with that all day rain heavy at times and some of the strong winds that we're going to have. So good. Could have some tree limb damage out there. Grab that rain gear. Uh, attentive and careful driving with those really windy conditions and watch out for some of that flooding. Grab that WHS 11 app. The QR code will take you right there as well. Interactive radar notifications for you on the app. Temperatures are in the 70s so with some clouds starting to roll in ahead of that rain. That'll be arriving tonight with a low of 68. Wet and windy conditions with the clouds and the rain. Temperatures held down to the lower 70s. We're going to time out more rain chances all the way through the weekend coming up. Thank you very much, Ben. Getting ready for tomorrow. Several Southern Indiana school districts aren't risking it. They're moving classes to NTI tomorrow. Both Borden Henryville schools as well as Greater Clark County schools are going to hold virtual instruction tomorrow on Friday. New Albany Floyd County schools are using a bad weather day. No NTI, no classes. It's just an off day. As for JCPS, we did ask at 3 o'clock this afternoon, and they tell us they've made no decision yet about tomorrow. With tomorrow's rain coming in, we checked with the city's emergency services and MSD about preparations in Louisville for tomorrow. Yeah, Ian Hardwit is out by UofL Speed School campus now. And Ian, what did those officials say about getting prepared for this? Connie, they say what they say all the time. Know what you need before you need it, especially with this big weather event coming. That's why we're here telling you about one of the big traffic things to look out for in Louisville. You can see these roads go down to overpasses where the trains go over them. Now, this spot by UofL's campus is called the Can Opener. If you want to get some of these alerts on where this weather is hitting, you can download the Smart 911 app. That gives you weather emergency alerts here in Louisville. Jody Myman, the head of Louisville's EMA, wants you to give it a shot. Listen to what he had to say earlier. Prepare now. There, there's going to be a lot of rain and a lot of wind. So obviously turn around, don't drown. We don't want to have to get anybody out of any kind of flooded roadways. Um, but, you know, prepare your house as well. Prepare for, you know, things like power outages. Um, you know, never run generators in or around your house. Whether you're enjoying the thunder and mud from Louisville's largest rock festival or the comfort of your home, Friday's storms are coming. We don't want people to prepare as it's coming in. We want them to take a look at the things that can impact them now. MSD operates off that advice. So we're ready. Before Thursday's mild weather, the Seward District finished their preparations for Hurricane Helene's leftover deluge. We've known this is coming for a while, so the crews have been out. They've completed all their pre-rain event checks. They'll check things like the viaducts and drainage channels um, with that have an overpass over them so if there's any like limbs and things that have caught that they'll clear those so that that water can flow on through. That rainfall washes out the sewers keeping down the smell of the aging system designed for more consistent rain. Without much rain recently, the river's low, and so that helps any part of town that drains into the river, like roads near Frankfurt Avenue. 
But when the rain starts, things can move like trash, leaves, uh, limbs and things can move and that can go into place and can clog something up. So they've cleared what they can and we're ready. And if there's any problems, just give us a call or visit our website and report a problem. Okay, if you want to report that flooding, here's the number to call. That's 502-540-6000. Or you can head over to LouisvilleMSD.org and click Report a Problem. If you're having trouble finding that, we've got a link for you over on the WHAS11.com homepage now. I'm live near U of L's campus with senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton. Ian, thank you very much. Well, Kentucky Governor Andy Beshear is encouraging Kentuckians to take safety precautions as the remnants of Helene move over a large part of the state of Kentucky. He says during times like this, it's important to keep in mind the saying, as you've been hearing, turn around and don't drown. If you encounter a flooded road, turn around. It's not worth it. Wherever you're trying to get to is absolutely not worth it. We care about you. We've lost too many people in flooding and tornadoes to a pandemic, to, to senseless acts of violence. We don't want to lose one more Kentuckian. We want to prevent every single one of those injuries or harm. Georgia. At the moment, the governor has not declared a state of emergency for Kentucky, but says search and rescue teams are right now on standby. Let's move to Louder Than Life, the four-day music concert in Louisville. Today was a great day of weather, but at the fairgrounds, with more than 100,000 people expected, they're planning for wind and rain. The organizers have already made some changes to help out fans who are expecting to get drenched. Jose Alonzo joins us from the Highland Festival grounds. And Jose, what are the folks telling you out there about their plans to stay dry? Exactly, Connie, Doug. There's a lot of excitement out here, but there's a lot of preparation as well, at least from what I've been hearing from the people I've been talking to. Rain jackets and even towels on standby, but oh, thankfully right now it's not raining quite yet. But take a look at what we got going on right over here. Loud music and concert currently going and a sea of people. This crowd continues to grow hour by hour that we've been here. And it started around 11 a.m. this morning and we spoke with a Louder Than Life producer and asked how they expect to handle the weather and the 190 people they expect this weekend. Uh, right now it's looking like rain, um, which we are built for. One of the reasons we moved to this festival grounds is because it can handle rain. Uh, we've been working with um, several different local agencies this week to add in some new drainage, um, as well as some reinforcements with some of our uh, portable structures. Neon green mohawk, just looking adorable there. The festival is also allowing in and out access of the gate for the first time in their 10 year span. This will allow anyone to take shelter in their car or even go change their clothes if they get wet. They've also secured the Freedom Hall just in case there is any lightning or high winds. Regardless, it seems like everyone is ready to take on this rain. Day one, we're here, we're ready for the rain. I know it's supposed to be rainy today, but the metal gods have called upon us have given us a dry day today. But well, I don't know about the rest of the week. God, what happened? Again, that, that, that's the, just the excitement that's felt all around this festival grounds. We're seeing so many unique outfits and costumes so far. No ponchos or rain gear at this moment. But what we do see are the clouds up here. They are big, they're gray. They're looking very wet at this moment. Thankfully, again, no pretend precipitation coming down here, but no one seems to be too stressed about it either. Reporting live at the Expo Center, Jose Alonso, WHAS 11 on your side. Well, Jose, uh, you mentioned it briefly that Freedom Hall can be used as a shelter if things get really bad out there. Of course, that would be an extreme case there, but with all that rain, it's really going to be what you wear. You cannot bring umbrellas. Exactly. It's about what you wear. No umbrellas are allowed here, but you can still have a clear bag, a towel, a poncho, and a raincoat. So make sure you're dressing for that weather. Doug? All right. Thank you, Jose Alonzo. Excellent coverage. Ladder to Life. We'll be joining him again tonight at 6. And as Helene continues to move north, we want you to be weather aware for the latest developments as it impacts Kentuckiana. Just download the WHS 11 News app. We'll send you updates right to your phone. 
How's everyone? They were chanting today. Members of Vocal Kentucky this morning right here outside Metro Hall in downtown Louisville calling for a solution to the nationwide housing crisis. Well, Vocal Kentucky joined other organizations across the United States today for what's being called the Housing Day of Action. Standing right outside the heart of Metro government included District 3 Council Member and Vocal Kentucky's Executive Director, Shamika Parrish Wright. She pointed out that Louisville's own crisis continues to grow because the city itself doesn't have enough resources available to help those in need. There's so many people who are even on the street with housing vouchers, but there's not enough places for them to rent. And now with the relocation of, of places like Dosker Manor, we know that that housing crisis is going to continue to grow. So we're out here to advocate to keep this issue lit, to make sure that they know that we're going to keep showing up for those who need us. Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg has a plan to create and preserve 15,000 affordable housing units by the year 2027. The Department of Metro Corrections is raising awareness on the stigma surrounding mental health with officers and their families. It comes on Law Enforcement Suicide Awareness Day in which the LMDC recognized those gone with a memorial. According to ABC News, about 184 officers nationwide die by suicide every year. Metro Corrections provided resources available to its officers and stressed how work they can do significantly significantly impact their lives beyond the badge. Working in law enforcement is a considerably taxing career um, and we here are really appreciative um, and honored to work with people that dedicate their lives to community service. Um, and so we hope that people feel her heard and understood and know that events like this are a space to honor them and all the work that they do. Now, if you or someone you know is needing help, remember that the Suicide Prevention Hotline is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Just call 988.